everybody and welcome back to Gaming on Caffey. My name is Isaac and today we are doing a little bit of a mod spotlight on a brand new mod that just released today. One that I've been waiting for for such a long time. Now this is the Thermal Dynamics mod for Minecraft 1.7.10. And for those who don't know what Thermal Dynamics is, it's basically the standalone mod that contains all of the fluid ducts, item ducts and energy conduits that we were used to seeing in Thermal Expansion in like Minecraft 1.6.4 and before. So, we're going to start with the flux ducts. These were formerly known as energy conduits in older versions of thermal expansion. And these are used to transfer redstone flux around your base, around to your machines, from your generators, and stuff like that. And for the most part, some of these have remained the same. The leadstone hardened and redstone energy flux duct are exactly the same as they were in 1.6.4, with a slight name change and a slight change to the amount of power that they can transfer. For instance, the leadstone flux duct has had a bit of a buff from an 80 redstone flux per tick throughput up to a 200 redstone redstone flux per tick throughput the hardened flux duct has gone from 400 to 800 and finally the redstone energy flux duct has gone i think down from 10,000 to 8,000 redstone flux per tick and all of these have the exact same recipes that they had before nothing has changed in that regard now the new stuff are these two conduits over here and i'm not gonna lie this one especially looks pretty freaking awesome if you ask me so to start with we have the resident flux duct this thing is just basically a higher tier version of all of these flux ducts and this thing can transfer up to 32,000 redstone flux per tick and is made using three redstone energy flux duct, an endrium ingot and some redstone or a resident energy flux duct, some redstone and some endrium nuggets. If you only want to make one instead of three, you can also get some uh, some empty ones by making yourself, by doing the same recipe basically, but with empty redstone energy flux ducts. So they're kind of the same upgrade as going from redstone to harden. You can see it's a very similar recipe here. We've got three redstone flux ducts with the redstone and the invar. And then over here, we have three redstone flux ducts, the redstone and the endrium ingot so it's just the natural progression upwards from the redstone flux duct and then here we have the cryo stabilized flux duct which looks flipping fantastic this thing can transfer infinite amounts of redstone flux it has no limit to the amount of redstone flux it can carry it's pretty hard to make it requires a empty cryo stabilized flux duct infused with some jelly cryothium and this guy here is made using a redstone energy flux duct with four hardened glass and four electrums so not all that hard to make but bear in mind this makes one cryo stabilized flux duct and then you need to put 500 millibuckets of jelly cryothium into each of those as well as 4,000 redstone flux to get one of these cryo stabilized flux ducts so they are pretty expensive but at the same time pretty freaking awesome because they can transfer infinite amounts of redstone flux and i think that's about it for the fluid ducts now if we were to head over here we now have the fluid ducts and the item ducts now in previous versions of thermal expansion we had i believe one fluid duct two item ducts and that was about it we now have a lot more options and to start with we have the copper fluid duct which is very similar to the general just fluid duct that we had in all the versions in that it just carries liquid we have a normal version and an opaque version i don't have the opaque versions up here but there is a normal version and an opaque version the opaque version is a little bit cheaper but of course you can't see what's going through it actually it looks like it's exactly the same price maybe a bit more expensive to go opaque this time around because you require lead instead of glass i think this used to be hardened glass which is why it used to be more expensive but apparently it's now cheaper and i think these do cost less like the However, that might have changed in the newer versions. So, these are used to transfer fluids. However, there is now a second fluid conduit, the hardened fluid conduit. And you may be wondering why. Why is there a second tier of fluid conduits? That is because the first tier has a bit of a caveat. If we press shift, you can see it says it will break if contents are extremely hot or cold. Which basically means if you're going to put stuff like blazing pyrothium, jelly cryothium, or even lava through these pipes, eventually they will break. For instance, if we were to go ahead and grab some blazing pyrothium, here. This is like the hottest liquid you can get, blazing pyrothium. And we were to go ahead and put this in here, like so, in this tank. And you'll see it's passing through these, uh, these copper conduits beneath here and going to this tank. If we set this to an input, it's all passing through. And to start with, it's fine. But if you leave this in long enough, if for a long enough time this has a very hot liquid in it, it will start to explode. Like that. Yeah, that's not what you want. Let's go ahead and try and get rid of that. There we go. Let's grab into the tank real quick. And I'll show you that the exact same thing happens if you try and put lava through. And also if you put some jelly cryothium through. Let's take you and do this again. Just doing that so I can do that. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. These are the uh, opaque ones. They work in exactly the same way. Let's grab some lava and do the exact same thing here. Fill this thing up. And let this one accept it. There we go. And again, it takes a lot longer with lava. 
Uh, if you're doing lava, I think you can kind of have a little bit go through at a time. But if you have like a, a long, consistent amount of lava going through, it will eventually break the pipes and you'll have to make some new ones. However, the hardened energy conduits, which not energy conduits, the hardened fluid ducts, which are a little bit more expensive. They do require some invar as opposed to some copper, are heat resistant. Contents may be any temperature. So no matter what you throw through the hardened fluid ducts, they will never, ever break. So that's kind of the only caveat to that thing. Let's go ahead and just put a bit of a bigger tank here so it can kind of keep going forever and ever there we go and eventually they should break it does take a while it takes a, a reasonably long time for it to actually happen but it does happen i'm gonna go ahead and just fill this one up real quick if i can and apparently i cannot i'm just i'm not fast enough <laughs> I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to leave that there, and hopefully that will explode at some point. I'm saying hopefully. I'm pretty sure it does. I, I did a bit of testing beforehand. And then finally, we have the fluxed plated fluid duct, which is actually really cool. And basically what this does is it transfers energy as well. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, see, they do explode eventually. It takes a long time, though. So you've got a bit of a, a, a grace period when it comes to transferring lava. Anyway, under the uh, the fluid duct with the flux duct attached, this thing is made using hardened fluid ducts, electrum, and signalum, which is a new ingot added by thermal expansion four, which destabilizes redstone, copper, and silver. And this thing basically transfers liquids and redstone flux at the same time. So it works in a similar way to these do. It is made using hardened uh, fluid ducts, so it will never explode, and it can also transfer two thousand redstone flux per tick, which is kind of cool if you want to transfer your fluids and your power in the same block instead of having multiple cables trying to go to a machine which is kind of cool it's also a very similar one with the item duct as well you'll see it over here the fluctuating item duct is is the same one for items it can transfer items and power at the same time and i believe again it's 2000 redstone flux per tick it is nice so that's all of the fluid ducts onto the item ducts the item ducts again are very similar the normal item duct and the impulse item duct i think are actually exactly the same as they were in older versions of thermal expansion requiring the same sort of stuff the new items that we have are the warp item duct and the fluctuate item duct now these things are really cool the warp item duct in particular if we go ahead and hover over it you can see it says uses redstone flux bracket rf to move items instantly so if we were to go ahead and grab some of these and then grab say a chest like so i'm gonna make a little network and we'll get to this in a second i'm just gonna use this to sort of demonstrate a couple of the servers that we have because you'll notice there are a lot of these little servers and things down here that we'll get to in just a second but uh, if i was to go ahead and put say a chest there a chest here and connect up all of these warp item ducts uh, by default they work as just normal item ducts if i was to put a chest in here and quickly grab a server uh, i'm gonna grab uh, the highest tier of server stick it on like so and then make sure I set redstone signal to ignored. It's going to go ahead and pull everything out of this chest. You'll see it does it with a fairly normal speed. It's pretty, it's kind of fast, but it's not extremely fast. Also, the animation is kind of fantastic. Look how smooth and awesome that is. But uh, that's how that works. But if you were to go ahead and provide these with some redstone flux of some kind, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and use a creative energy cell. And we stick that down right about there. You'll see that the color inside changes. And it's a bit weird because as you move around the uh, sort of the space, I guess, inside of there moves around as well it's a bit weird but now if we were to put stuff in like a whole stack of redstone flux cables put them in there they move instantly instantaneously no matter how far away i was to put these cables so let's say i was gonna do something like this and i made this route like really really long these things would continue to get pulled and transfer instantly no matter how long this cable was and i'm getting into grass here which i didn't really want to do but let's say we throw down a chest like there and then we go ahead and put you down in there. We've got all 64 of those. Uh, if we were to go ahead and again put this in, set it to ignore. I think it is going to even pull it out one at a time. Um, oh, no, it's going to pull the whole stack out. Okay, so it's going to pull the whole stack out there. But then if we were to put them in again, after putting this down... And head on over. You'll see they both made it there instantly, which is kind of awesome. This is going to make setups a lot easier because the transfer is instantaneous, which is so much better than waiting for these item ducts. That was the one complaint I had about the old item ducts is they were so slow compared to some other stuff like transfer nodes that it was kind of annoying to go long distance with them. This makes it perfect. I have no idea how much redstone flux they use for this to work. I guess we could test it real quick if we were to grab, say, uh, some form of energy cell and just stick it down next to it. We'll kind of see how much redstone flux this thing uses. Users. Uh, doesn't seem to be using any there, and I think it's not going to use that much, to be fair. Yeah, it's using it's using a very, very small amount of redstone flux, as you can see here. It is using a little bit, 
but it's really tiny. I think it's not going to use that much power. And probably by the time you get these, by the time you can make this recipe, which I don't think I've shown yet, is, come on, go back to the chest mode. There we go. Is made using Enderium Nuggets and the Item Ducks. Not all that bad, but Enderium is pretty expensive. By the time you've got the, to these Item Ducks, you probably have enough power to sustain them anyway, so you're probably not going to worry about the slight little power cost that these things have. And then finally, of course, we have the fluct Fluctuating Item Duct, which, as like I said before, like with the Fluid Duct, can transfer both items and power at the same time. So if you want to have a machine and you only want to have one cable going to it as opposed to like a conduit and an item duct at the same time, you can use the fluctuating item duct and you can just send items and power at the same time or pull items and send power at the same time, which is pretty freaking awesome. You can see all of the item ducts do connect together, much like all of the conduits do connect together. I think this does work. However, the transfer would get like get lower and lower and the bottleneck would start to appear at this end if you were to connect them up like this. But uh, they do all connect. The fluid ducts do not connect, so you cannot connect a copper fluid duct to a hardened fluid duct. However, you can connect all of these together if you so wish you could probably have like item ducts coming along here and then suddenly transfer to with the fluctuating item ducts hook up some power and then just have it go for the last bit the whole system doesn't have to be made of fluctuating item ducts you could just have the last couple be made of fluctuating item ducts which is kind of cool and finally onto the last bit of this mod like i said earlier you'll notice there are a lot of these like rectangles down here we have a bunch of servos we have a basic hardened reinforced signalum and resonant server and then we have the same tiers for the filters and for the retrievers now uh, the servos we had before and if we go ahead and hover over them you'll see that this one requires a redstone signal this one requires a redstone signal this one has an internal redstone signal control and this one also has internal redstone signal and so does the last one so the first two if we were to grab these and sort of stick them on any item duct like this You'll see that it gets this, and this now has the ability to pull stuff out. However, it will only do it if we have a redstone signal uh, next to it. So, something like this. There we go. That will now pull out, and I believe it will go to the nearest inventory if it can. There we go, and there we go. Now, you'll notice that that was really slow. That was, like, really, really slow, especially at pulling it out. And that's because if we go ahead and hover over this, you'll say extraction rate three seconds. I think that means it takes three seconds to pull something out. If we would just throw that in and go one, two three there we go <laughs> so it's really slow and as you upgrade the tiers it gets faster and faster you can see that's two seconds one second 0 0.5 and then 0 0.5 again and also as you get higher up you get better things like stack size you get better filter options like you can see blacklist metadata mbt or detection mod owner etc mod owner is actually really cool uh, and then you can also see extracts from multiple slots uh, if we were to go ahead and throw like a bunch of stuff in here and replace this let's just quickly wrench it if you just right click with the wrench it will pull it off and if you shift right click, it'll break the, uh, the the server as a whole. Now, if we were to replace this with a resident servo again, it should be able to pull from multiple slots at once. You'll see it's going a lot faster, which is kind of cool. Again, if we were to go ahead and do something like this, it pulls them all pretty much instantly. And if we were to look in here, we now have the option to blacklist certain items. For instance, if I didn't want it to be able to pull out these redstone servers, I could blacklist those. And now it won't pull those out, which is kind of cool. I could do the same for whitelist. I could whitelist this thing. So it's only going to pull those out. And if I put my crescent hammer in there, it's not going to pull it out. You can use the use MBT function to make sure it only pulls out, say, say, tools once they hit a certain durability. For instance, if you only want to pull out a sword once it hits, like, one durability, then you could set that using MBT. You get it down to one durability, stick it in here, make sure it's set to use MBT, and then it would only pull that sword out once it hits one durability, which is kind of cool. And then, finally, the last thing that I really want to talk about is the filter is kind of uh, obvious. I think it just allows you to, to filter stuff. If we just stick that on there, right click. It's just a filter that that's, that's all it is, really. So it's a filter. Uh, I think we could use these. You can see the inputs. So basically, it will only allow certain things in. So if I was to stick a resonant server on there, and then a reinforced filter on there, and then within this filter, I said that I only want to, I want to blacklist the uh, the wrench here, and I was to put the crescent hammer in here, it will pull it out, but then it won't go to this chest because this chest has been blacklisted against having crescent hammers. So crescent hammers cannot go into this chest. At that point, it's going to go around and go to the next nearest inventory. In this case, the chest. So, the final thing that I want to talk about now is the retrieval uh, servos. And these things are the last couple down here. And we have, again, a basic hardened reinforced signalum and a resonant. And these are kind of like the retrieval nodes, if any of you have seen extra utilities, uh, in that they pull distant item slash fluids to itself. So, if we were to, again, grab a resonant one, again, the upgrades just kind of offer better stuff, better uh, extraction rates and stuff like that. 
But uh, for now, if we would use a resonant receiver and we would stick it down on the end like that, and we were to say that we want all, we want to pull all crescent hammers that are connected from all other chests to this chest, and again, make sure we set that to ignore redstone signal, and then we would just stick a, uh, a crescent hammer in this chest, it would detect that uh, it should detect eventually. Oh, uh, we want to whitelist that. There we go. So it detected that one of the chests in the system had a crescent hammer in it. So it searches all of the chests in your system for ones that have crescent hammers and will pull them all towards this chest, which is kind of cool. Really useful for uh, for setting up like uh, uh, sorting systems. You go mining, you come back with a bunch of ore and you just want to have one chest where you put all of your stuff in and then you want to have iron ore go to one chest and then copper go to another and then tin go to another. You can just dump everything into one chest and then on the other end, just have a bunch of retrieval servos. I think, what uh, are they called retrievers? Oh, sorry, resident retrieval. Retrievers. Uh, I keep wanting to call them retrieval nodes. Uh, you can have a bunch of retrievers on the other end just requesting certain items from that chest, which is pretty freaking awesome. And it's going to make sorting a lot easier. But with that, guys, that is it. Thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like. I just really quickly want to show off these real quick. Look at this. Look how cool these conduits look. I think they look awesome, these infinite energy conduits. But to begin, thanks for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like. And I will see you next time.